Hey guys, so I'm back again with another video and this time I'm answering a couple popular questions about one of the final steps and one of the most important steps when it comes to building golf clubs and that is epoxy. Now, a lot of people worry about a lot of different parts of the golf club and epoxy is one of those things that people don't really think about but it's super important when it comes to building golf clubs because it's really the only thing that holds the shaft to the club head. If it fails, you've got a broken golf club. Now, there's a couple things to consider. There's the type of epoxy you can use. One is a quick set. Typically it's gonna set and be ready to hit in less than 20 minutes. There's a couple different versions. Some of the best out there is 3M Scotch Weld. It comes in a bunch of different sizes, a couple different varieties. It works very well as far as uh, its reliability. It's from 3M, they make great products, but the only issue is it's really expensive. Now. The one thing to also consider is the method or, the, or the, the container in which epoxy comes in. A lot of times epoxy will come in these little tubes. Now when they come in these tubes, it's typically gonna be, again, more expensive because you're buying less, you're buying a lot of packaging and you're buying convenience. This is not golf club epoxy, this is just an example. This is like cheap dollar store epoxy that I use for fixing other little things around the house. But this using as an example of, it's simple because you get the same ratio every time and that leads to our next subject, and that is actually mixing epoxy when you're using something like this. And this is a two-part epoxy, part A, part B. And there's a couple different things to really consider. This is a longer set epoxy. It's gonna give me about an hour of working time, and it'll set within 20 hours. You can speed it up a bit if you're using a higher temperature. If you're using a heating cell, I don't use a heating cell. I just let things sit and uh, cure on their own. But with this, uh, it's really important. You'll notice the bottles are actually the same size. Now, this is a one-to-one -one volume. I'm going to use a couple different terminologies here. This is a one-to-one -one volume mix epoxy, and that means for every one cc of this you use, you use one cc of this. But what's really important is, and it's difficult to measure that, if you're using a piece of cardstock or plastic or whatever, and you're making your little lines of epoxy, it's hard to judge if those lines match up volume wise because you're just mushing it onto a piece of paper. There's a really simple trick to make sure what you're mixing is the right ratio to make sure that you're gonna get the strongest bond possible. And how that works is a lot of epoxy, almost every one that comes in two parts, has this little chart on the side. And not only does it measure the volume mix ratio, but it also lists the mass mix ratio. And for this, for example, for every 10 parts of part A, you use seven parts of part B. So for every one, you use 0.7. Uh, this is a really, really quick way to make sure that you're mixing it properly every single time. So I use a scale. So if I mix 10 grams of this epoxy, I mix seven grams of part B. If I mix five, I mix 3.5. It's seven times tables, really simple. And it comes down to chemistry because what happens is if these parts are not mixed correctly, and there is some, I don't want to say that they build in a certain amount of uh, potential kind of off on it, but you want to be as close as possible. I try and be as close as possible. So I use a scale, and this allows me to make sure that I get the same mix ratio every single time. So when I build golf clubs, they don't fall apart. It's, uh, it's, that's basically the most important aspect when you're building a golf club. Now, most grips aren't gonna come off because they're on with grip tape, but if you have epoxy fail, uh, that's not good at all. And the one thing that I like about this stuff versus a lot of quick set is the breakdown temperature. So if you're building a lot of golf clubs, or you are gonna be doing some testing, this breaks down at a slightly lower temperature than quick set. Quick set will often require a much higher temperature to break the bond down. So if you're pulling and putting golf clubs back together a lot, quick set, uh, you're, you're gonna tend to go through a lot more stuff. It's gonna be harder to pull those clubs apart. Now, last but not least, this is one of those questions I get as well, shafting beads. I use them all the time. I don't use them on every single project, but I use them on most projects because it just helps make sure that the shafts are centered in the hosel. If it's not centered, you could have a pressure point, especially with graphite, you don't want that. And just follow the instructions. Everyone's a little bit different. They're different uh, particle sizes. You can get some really like thick stuff that's heavy or grit. Uh, this is glass shafting beads. They're really, really fine. And all you have to do is follow the instructions for mixing the ratio and again typically it's a it's a volume ratio so you're just gonna you can use like a little teaspoon or something it's really quick to get it on there and mix it in and then let it sit a little bit and what this also helps do is make sure that you get a lot of air bubbles out because air bubbles can again um, cause clubs to eventually fail 
Uh, I really appreciate the question. It's it's really common question, but a lot of people don't really understand how epoxy necessarily works or how the clubs are held together. And this is it. It's important to mix properly and just take the time to do it right. That's always my motto is to make sure if you're gonna do something, do it right. Take the time to do it right and you won't have to chase golf clubs down the, uh, the driving range. Uh, if you have any more questions like this, I appreciate everyone who asks these questions. I try and answer them as best I can, either in the comments section or by doing a video like this. Uh, and please subscribe. There's lots of videos with lots of information out there uh, that I'm trying to, trying to put out as best as I can. So if, if you have more questions, just feel free to ask. And thanks so much for watching.